I would like to welcome all of you at our conference. The topic is not new. You know very well about that. Some of us remember debates in the European Parliament on Nord Stream 1 10 years ago, but even better on South Stream more recently. Since then, a lot <coughs> has happened. On the one hand, we had several gas supply crises and we face stagnation in gas markets. On the other hand, we have introduced legislative measures to make EU energy supply more secure. We have increased joint funding to energy infrastructure, projects of common interest, and last but not least, we have given our energy policy a strategic framework, the energy union. We are very happy that the Vice President of the European Commission, responsible for energy union, Maro Shevchovic, is with us to deliver the keynote speech. We always underline we create the energy union for our citizens and companies, including energy companies. It is not a set of common rules. All we ask from anyone who wants to do business in the EU and with the EU is to respect these rules. Since the very beginning, we have been creating our EU energy policy on the basis of three sets of rules. Business rules, environmental rules, and EU solidarity rule. Today we feel that our energy union is at crossroads, as it is mentioned in the title of the conference. The topics of Nord Stream came back last summer, like a boomerang, this time as expansion to Nord Stream 2. Nord Stream 2 puts our whole strategy of energy union in the European Union at question. This was the main conclusion of the three debates which we had in plenary last autumn. Few words about results of our three discussions. The message was strong and quite clear. The majority of European Parliament opposes Nord Stream expansion. We raised concerns about our energy independence and more broadly about security, economy and geopolitics. We stressed that Nord Stream 2 would further strengthen the dominant supplier who is already subject to antitrust investigation by the European Commission for abusing his position in the EU. Answering all these concerns, all these concerns, Commissioner Kanyete stated very clearly after our present discussion in autumn, in October, Nord Stream 2 is against the EU strategy of gas diversification. It can never become a project of common interest and it cannot benefit from the EU financing or support. In a way, today's conference is a continuation of those debates. I hope we can find answers to several questions. Let me put for the beginning some of them, business questions, first of all. What is the economic justification for Nord Stream 2 when the existing capacities are being used only in 50% and when global gas markets are stagnating? Second, what is the advantage of building new expensive pipelines on the seabed over modernizing existing pipelines? And thirdly, how to protect our energy resilience, geopolitical goals and overall security while protecting the commercial freedom in the EU? Each question is very important for us. But also, two more general questions. Maybe put on the table from the intergovernmental or European institutions point of view. What, the, what is the environmental footprint of this expansion? Who will be responsible for solving possible environmental crisis? And how does Nord Stream 2 affect EU's 
focus on the blue economy and its potential for creating growth and new jobs. And the last question, last but not least, maybe the most important one. When we face so many difficulties, can the EU afford creating new tension between the member states and new difficulties for countries in the EU neighbourhood? Who will be legally, logistically and financially responsible if the expansion of Nord Stream causes unplanned and uncontrolled closing down of existing infrastructure with all the possible crisis of supply. If built, Nord Stream 2 would have to fully comply as any other infrastructure project with applicable EU law, including on energy, environment and public procurement. Let me underline again that EU law applies in principle also to offshore infrastructure under the jurisdiction of member states, including their exclusive economic zones. What exactly within EU sectorial legislation applies has to be assessed in regard to their specific provisions. The construction of such an important infrastructure project as Nord Stream 2 cannot happen in legal void. This would also run counter to the interest of economic operators in having legal certainty. Neither can it be exclusively operated only according to Russian law. Against the background of colliding legal regimes, Nord Stream 2, if built, has to be operated under a legal framework which also takes due account of the key principles of our energy market rules. I wish to start by reminding that it was this commission which has set up the creation of the energy union as one of the key priorities. Energy union was supposed to be yet another area of common policy and consolidated action for the European Union. Energy union was designed first and foremost to deal with Russia, but not against that country. We all agreed that Russia can no longer be seen as a reliable partner as it is using its oil and gas supply as a political weapon via Gazprom or other executors of Kremlin. And today, we have to face this project, duplication of existing Nord Stream, which is about to kill much of what was intended to be built or achieved, and much of what we pretended we had learned. And I am not exaggerating, to deal with the killer project. The Nord Stream 2 project, in my view, designed to kill many things, and I will mention five of them. Firstly, European Union's unity. It's already hugely exaggerated, but Europe is again divided to the West and East. Those who will be directly supplied and those who will be directly bypassed, and their future as a transit countries will be put at a big question mark. Second, alternative energy efforts. In the first place, the LNG terminals are put at huge risk. As oil transported via tubes will always be cheaper. Now, are we going to expect our alternative energy technologies to be innovative if we are still sitting happily with the cheap Russian gas? Third, European future of Ukraine. That is our problem. And do we have any problem with Ukraine? Has it caused any cuts of transit to Europe? No, transit was secured despite the war from Russia. Ukraine is now saying it's ready to duplicate the transit through its territory. Why it's not considered as an option? Fourth, a good name and image of Germany. It sometimes cannot, and I do not understand, the logics of the German politics and business. Why there is such a huge desire to be connected to the Russian syringe? Are we not afraid of these corrupted Russian businesses inside Germany? And fifth, and very essence of energy union, if Nord Stream is going to be further developed, the energy union will be not at the crossroads but at a far less pleasant place, I am afraid. 
the Council and the European Council have been given fairly consistent messages in the last three years, time and again, because they reaffirmed the significance of three points. The first one being the reduction of the EU's energy dependency. The second one being the fact that we have to increase the security of supply, and they've endorsed the strategy. And three, that there should be diversification of routes, sources, and suppliers. These are three elements consistently coming back in statements, conclusions of the Council and the European Council. The Council also stressed the need to implement critical projects of common interest, not that Nord Stream 2 would be a project of common interest, but they have consistently um, stressed the importance of that in the gas sector to ensure the goals that I just mentioned. And in that context, it is important also to say that the Council stated by welcoming the EU Energy Diplomacy Action Plan that foreign policy instruments and channels should be used to ensure the long-term energy supplies to and the transit through Ukraine. This was all endorsed and stated unanimously by the Council. Now, the December European Council, where the leaders had a discussion, a thorough discussion. Following that discussion, the European Council not only recalled that any new project should entirely comply with the third energy package and any other legislation, but also emphasized that any new project should be compliant with the objectives of the energy union. So this means that the European Council clearly put forward a legal but also a political conditionality. In the light of this, it can be argued, and some raise serious questions, as to the compliance with the goal of strengthened energy security, as this project does not seem to reduce the dependence from one supplier, and does not seem to contribute to the diversification or multiplication of sources and routes. I believe that this project of redoubling of Nord Stream will engage us at different levels. Our task is to start a reflection, and not an ideologic reflection, but a specific reflection on this work. Here, I don't refer to the uh, problems, uh, geopolitical problems. We heard the problem. We talked about different problems uh, in the first part of this debate. Some aspects have been anticipated, and we will have to repeat them. So they have been object. The, the geopolitical aspects have been already object of a wide debate. Here, I would like to refer the, to the profile of economic sustainability and to the environmental sustainability of this project, which are very important. Today, since its start in 2011, Nord Stream 1 operates at 50% of its potential. So therefore, we can uh, uh, understand that uh, since 2019, Nord Stream 2 will add new overcapacity to the existing overcapacity we have now. So we will be speaking about an investment which is completely useless for the energy supply chain in Europe. We will speak about an infrastructure that does not meet the real needs in Europe. And we also speak about the lack of infrastructures, internal infrastructures connecting the East and the West. Uh, of European Union. So we speak about a project that uh, does not satisfy the requirements of the third energy package, uh, particularly as um, far as the management and distribution is concerned. Nord Stream have been overlapped in the original profile and uh, have created an oligopoly uh, on the gas routes from East. And this has a negative impact on pricing and has a negative impact on supplies uh, into Europe. Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 is a part of the solution and contributes significantly to energy security. 
We will also stimulate the construction of new connecting pipelines in Europe. And if you have an eye on the maps of uh, infrastructure internally in Europe 20 years, 10 years ago, and you have now an eye on the infrastructure which has built in the past years, it's a great achievement in Europe that we have now a real internal market where the gas can flow from one point to the other point in Europe, and this is really remarkable. So from our point of view, we stimulate not only new infrastructure, we create new liquidity in the market. That means more liquidity in the market, more competition, and this has an impact on pricing and the choice for the customer. I would allow myself um, uh, also um, an additional uh, introductory remark uh, because I'm sitting here as a green, so on a panel which is uh, also made for greens, but I'm also um, with uh, other colleagues, uh, long-standing friend not only of Ukraine but of uh, the whole of the east of our continent, I would uh, underline that this includes Russia. And um, from my point of view, based on the uh, experiences uh, since the Kremlin uh, decided uh, to go for a hybrid war, on Ukrainian territory, but uh, also targeted uh, against European strategies, um, it feels uh, for me strange uh, to regard uh, Nord Stream 2 as part of a strategy which can uh, contribute to better security of supply uh, of energy in the European Union. And uh, I found it uh, very good uh, when um, Mr. Tusk, as president of the council, uh, intervened um, directly after the new experiences with uh, the Kremlin and uh, came with this idea of the energy union, especially also as an answer to the new challenges posed to the European Union uh, by Russia. Uh, so. Uh, I'm convinced uh, right now is, uh, is, is the, the opposite uh, of what we want to achieve uh, for security of supply when we go for Nord Stream 2. Um, and I can't regard this only as a business case, a private uh, issue. So uh, the idea of the energy union uh, demonstrates uh, that uh, in the European Union, we have the idea uh, that the strategy, the long-term strategy for energy supply shall be influenced by decisions uh, of uh, politicians and those um, decisions should take into account uh, all aspects of security and not only the supply security. Um, so having said that, uh, I come to our panel and um, so the, the, the ideas which uh, the European Union uh, brought back from the climate conference in uh, Paris, in addition to what uh, we uh, laid down um, in many, many papers and discussions uh, on uh, the uh, energy union of the European Union, make it for me clear that the added value uh, of, an Euro of a European energy strategy cannot be more of the same or more from the past uh, for the future. And uh, the real challenge uh, for the European Union when it comes uh, to plans for the, for the future are around the development uh, of uh, renewables, um, of uh, energy efficiency, of energy savings. And uh, if we miss this, uh, the European Union would miss uh, the best moment uh, to really achieve uh, the biggest and most important uh, innovation project for our economy and our industry. We probably represent, four of us organizers, the majority of members of European Parliament. It's very important because it's qu quite clear from the previous discussions. And uh, we, as a matter of fact, if we take serious, and we should take serious, our discussion in the European Parliament, um, we can say that Nord Stream 2 and Energy Union cannot coexist. 
And uh, we take it into account. But it's also a very important signal to the consortium. We want you to give you possibility to speak, not only on the technical level. Also, in, we invited somebody on the political level, if you want to say something. Because the project is certainly a political one, not only commercial. As all the projects on such a scale are political ones, from point of view of our cooperation in the European Union, our solidarity, our, and our certainty in the future. So it is very open, very, very important that we've got open discussion here in the European Parliament. And we should take into account, it is a matter of each of us, if, it, it was, uh, it would, if, if we could be convinced for any solution. But certainly, on behalf of the European Parliament, we wanted to give a strong signal that we are open for discussion. And we want to give also signal to our companies in the European Union about the state of the play and the feelings in the European Parliament. Thank you very much. You know, it were not us who taught uh, a lesson that energy is not anymore a business, as usual. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Gazprom weaponized uh, energy, and Gazprom was a site which taught us that lesson. I mean, you might disagree. I, I noticed your position, but uh, history will show, I mean, who is right, who is not. So that's why let's not fool ourselves that energy anymore is a kind of business as usual. So that's why I was and I am remaining and insisting that Nord Stream 2 is a project killer, which kills a sense of cooperation in many instances in, in the European Union. We try to build the union of energy in the European Union on one hand, and on another one, we leave so much of, uh, at risk that it might fail in the, in the very end, or at least there will be some uh, holes left uh, uh, which might uh, really unbalance this project. Uh, I don't believe that we should be happy once we see that some questions are unanswered and remain unclear. No, we will insist that the European Commission will supply us with those replies. And I do support uh, the initiative of our colleague uh, Claude uh, Turmes, who started the declaration. And we signed, many of us, already a declaration on uh, Nord Stream 2. And I hope that uh, uh, it will help us to facilitate uh, clarifying process of this one. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you all panelists uh, coming uh, uh, to us. And I hope uh, it's not the last point uh, on the Vinve story. Thank you. Non siamo d'accordo con il raddoppio del Nord Stream. Ci sono vari motivi. Alcuni sono di natura politica. Si, eh, con un raddoppio di gas che viene dalla Russia dipendiamo di più da un'unica fonte e non da molte fonti come dovrebbe essere. Mettiamo in grande difficoltà un paese amico che è l'Ucraina. Ma ci sono anche motivi di natura ambientale. Dovrebbe calare a fronte dell'efficienza energetica il consumo di gas e quindi la previsione è quella di avere un consumo di gas più basso. A cosa serve? Fare un nuovo tubo evidentemente non serve a nulla. I think we had a very good and comprehensive discussion, I mean, from uh, different angles, from business, from uh, uh, environment, from politics, from uh, geopolitics. Uh, some people uh, try to present uh, the Nord Stream 2 as purely business-based project. I don't see this uh, project as business-based. It's more like a project killer. It kills European energy solidarity. It kills um, energy diversification and uh, security of supply. I think we, after this conference, we got even more questions which we should ask the European Commission to reply to us, and we're going to do this. So that's why we had very uh, useful exchange, and I appreciate uh, all the panelists I mean, who joined our conference. I'm glad uh, that uh, we managed to have today this hearing uh, on uh, Nord Stream 2. 
Uh, I think, um, again, uh, it came out that politically is a very, very risky project. It's um, deepening, if it comes, uh, the gap uh, in the European Union in between the East and the West. It's increasing the mistrust from the East to the West and uh, it will weaken uh, Ukraine, a country anyway weakened uh, by losses of territory, uh, by the war in Donbas and by a very, very difficult uh, economic situation. So the European Union in several uh, contexts has uh, alternatives to develop. Um, we need a true and deep innovation strategy for the European Union's uh, energy sector. And for me as a Green, uh, I would say efficiency and renewables first as the true innovations. Open debate. It was the main goal of our meeting and our conference. Uh, we want you to meet uh, also representative of the consortium on Nord Stream 2 to discuss all the issues. Uh, I can say on behalf of the majority in the European Parliament uh, that uh, uh, the outcome of our discussion is quite clear. Nord Stream 2 and our European um, uh, Energy Union uh, cannot coexist. So the majority of the members of the European Parliament are against uh, the expansion of Nord Stream. Uh, it's very important to underline that we build our energy union on the basis of uh, uh, good business cooperation, environmental protection and also solidarity rules. Three of them are very important and we would like to combine three of them to be responsible for the whole project. It's not a commercial one, it is political an important project as well. So responsibility not on the consortium and uh, business community, but also the member states, um, European institutions like Council, Commission and the European Parliament. On this basis, we discussed very openly uh, all the aspects of Nord Stream 2 and the result of our discussion is similar to our discussion in uh, in the plenary sessions that we cannot agree with such a project uh, which goes against our European rules and our energy union.